Imagine trading stocks all day and all night. Robinhood just announced 24 hour trading is coming to their platform, but is this a game changer or an investor trap waiting to happen? Hey everyone, my name is Preet and this channel is for anyone who wants to learn more about the world of money around us. On Wednesday, May 10th, Robinhood announced that 24 hour trading of stocks and ETFs is coming to their trading platform. Now the plan is to start rolling it out over the following week with all users having access to it by June. In this video, we're gonna talk about what 24 hour trading is. I'm gonna lay out the major risks associated with overnight stock trading. And we're gonna look at who has already been offering 24 hour trading and what you need to know about all of this as an investor. Let's first give some context by starting with understanding the normal trading day. Traditional stock trading takes place over six and a half hours a day with the opening bell ringing at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time and the closing bell ringing at 4 p.m. Eastern time on weekdays. Extended hours trading refers to trading that occurs outside these regular trading hours and can be divided into pre-market trading and after hours trading. One thing that is important to note straight from the Securities and Exchange Commission the rules governing markets and trading venues during extended hours trading vary and may differ significantly from rules that apply during regular trading hours, which is another way of saying someone is going to find a way to exploit investors because there are different rules here. Those exploitations may come in various forms, and we'll talk about some of those forms in this video. Different platforms have different hours for when they let customers trade in the pre-market or in the after hours market. The pre-market can start as early as 4 a.m., and the after hours market can run until 8 p.m. Now, practically speaking, some trading platforms might offer access starting at 8 a.m., but some do offer it as early as 4 a.m. Pre-market trading is not available for all market exchanges. It is available for the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, but pre-market trading is not available for, for example, the Toronto Stock Exchange. After hours trading times also vary by platform and exchange. Most after hours trading volume in the US runs until about six or 6.30. So some platforms just stop there, but some of them run until 8 p.m. in some cases. In Canada on the TSX, after hours trading is available, but only from 4.15 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. So now let's talk about 24 hour trading. It's commonly referred to as 24-5 trading, as in 24 hours a day, five days a week, as the weekends are not currently available. Though that might be changing soon as other companies have signaled their plans to make that a reality. In any case, it's been enabled by what's called ATSs or alternative trading systems, which are trading venues that operate like stock exchanges, but with different rules. And often these rules are looser. One in particular called BOATS, which stands for Blue Ocean Alternative Trading System, provides the venue for trading stocks from 8 p.m. at night until 4 a.m. in the morning. So when you connect that to the earliest pre-market trading hours and latest after hours trading, it's possible for a brokerage where customers place their orders to get access to trading securities 24 hours a day, five days a week. So the next question is why? Why is 24 hour trading becoming more available for securities? I say more available because 24 five trading already exists in the US. For example, on TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim platform, you can trade ETFs 24 hours a day if you want, five days a week. What's unique about Robinhood's offering is that they are offering 24 five trading on individual stocks, which is riskier. Now, there are a number of interrelated reasons why this is all likely happening. One, Forex and crypto already allow for 24 hour trading. And more so with crypto, the fact that more retail individual investors have been introduced to investing with cryptocurrencies being available 24 seven, from their perspective, it might be weird to be limited to trading only six and a half hours, five days a week. Two, the growth in demand from overseas investors who want to trade US securities during their normal workday has grown. 
Blue Ocean has signed some partnerships with firms in Asia who are using their trading venue to access U.S. stocks when their investors are awake because the U.S. is one of the most important, largest stock markets in the world and people want access to it. We want to give global investors the ability to manage their risk 24 hours a day, but we also want to give Asian investors, in particular Korean investors, the ability to trade U.S. stocks during their daytime hours. Access to U.S. stocks during the trading day of investors around the world makes this a very lucrative business. And if it's working for overseas investors, companies like Blue Ocean would be expected to continue expanding and building new relationships with brokerages all around the world, including at home. And three, there was a boom in retail investor account openings during the first two years of the pandemic. One of the reasons was that people were working from home and had more time and access to trading stocks. And as newer account trading dies down and with the return to the office taking place, trading revenues are down for brokerages. So why not make trading available when people aren't at the office to try and recapture some of that drop in trading revenue? Four the spreads are wider and so the profit margins for market makers will likely be higher while volumes are lower there is money to be made off the backs of retail investors and if you want to learn more about that i'll add a link to a detailed video that explains payment for order flow which will explain how a market maker can make money based on spreads so what are the risks associated with overnight trading and extended trading in general well, there's the risk of lower liquidity, which translates into a lot of knock-on potential problems. Liquidity refers to how efficiently you can buy and sell at a competitive price. When there are lots of orders and volume of trades, pricing is more efficient and the spreads are narrow. Because there are relatively few investors in after hours and overnight trading venues, there's not a lot of orders or volume. Look at this chart from Investopedia, which gives an example of trading in a security during normal trading hours and then in between trading days during extended hours. A volume is higher during the normal trading day, but comparatively close to zero in this case during extended hours. And with that, you can see much higher volatility, which can translate into much higher emotional responses, which can translate into making rash decisions and big mistakes. If you don't know the difference between market orders and limit orders, you'll lose your shirt in extended hours trading. That being said, many brokerages don't allow you to use market orders during extended hours because it is so risky. But some do. And again, if you don't know the difference, that is an expensive lesson to learn the hard way. Spreads can be huge and you can take advantage of less experienced investors or get taken advantage of. You run the risk of wildly overpaying when buying and getting a low well price when selling. You also just might not get your order filled at all. The risk of unlinked markets is not one to gloss over. It's possible that the price shown to you is vastly different to the price offered on another trading venue at the same time. As a retail investor, you might only see the one venue while a professional that you're trading against is operating in multiple venues at the same time. They could take advantage of the different prices on different venues to happily trade against you all night long and make money no matter which way the stock is moving due to arbitrage. There's a whole list of extended market trading risks that I'll link to from the SEC, but perhaps the biggest risk to individual investors is that the more you trade, the worst performance tends to be. There was a landmark paper that came out in the year 2000 called Trading Can Be Hazardous to Your Wealth. The main takeaway was that the more people traded, the lower their performance, all other things being equal. Specifically, the investors who traded the most, the highest quintile as measured by a portfolio turnover, underperformed an appropriate benchmark by over 10% annually. While commissions and bid ask spreads are lower today, competition from algorithmic and high frequency traders is higher. And the same authors recently explored Robinhood traders in an article published just a few months ago in the Journal of Finance. And while they acknowledge that lower barriers to entry have increased market participation of smaller investors, those same friction reducing methods also increase speculative trading, which can lead to lower investment returns. So I am not a fan of 24 hour trading for retail investors, but what does this all mean for you? Well, if you use an advisor, nothing, nobody cares. 
If you invest on your own and just put money into your account and buy and hold for the long term, this will also mean nothing to you. You're not missing out on absolutely anything. If you're actively day trading already, some of you might dabble in overnight trading to see what it's like before wondering, what's the point? And some people might like it because they are otherwise occupied during the day, but hopefully you know the deck is stacked against you and you're making your choice from a position of being informed of the risks, but it is not for me. I hope we don't see this come to Canada anytime soon, but if we do, the firms offering it know that the only reason they would do it is for their own profits, not yours. Do you see any benefit to 24 hour trading for investors? Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And you know the drill, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to learn more about money and managing your finances. And of course, hit the bell to turn on notifications for when I publish new content and I will see you in the next video.